It's time for a sawmill update and uh, here's the progress so far. As you can see the tracks are all welded up. I've got the beginnings of a carriage, just the beginnings. The carriage isn't all squared up or anything yet. It's just on rollers. But you can see it rolls really, really easy. These pipes will be the uh, carrier for the actual band wheels. And uh, they're just in there, sitting in there right now in a, in a sleeve. This, this isn't even all squared up yet. It's just a, just a beginning. I've kind of got everything in mind on how I want to build it, but I don't have it absolutely black and white yet because again I didn't know what materials I would be able to get. So Those pipes are about six feet tall right now. That may be too tall. I'm just letting them run long for the moment. Here's a picture of the uh, motor that I bought. It has electric start. It's an 18 horsepower motor. So we should have plenty of power and the fact that it's electric start should make it uh, more pleasurable to use. I got this on eBay for approximately, uh, I think it was $319. I, I couldn't hardly believe that price, uh, and that was including shipping and everything, with electric start and 18 horsepower, and it had a very good write-up, so I'm assuming it's a good motor. I don't really know. haven't tried to start it yet. Here's the present state of my sawmill. It's been quite a while since I filmed anything. You can see I've got the wheels mounted. I've got a band on there loosely at the moment, just so you can see how the band goes on there. There's an 18 horsepower motor located approximately where it's going to go. If you look at the top up there, and it's a little far away, but we'll zoom in later. You can see there's chains across the top that rotate the two threaded rods on each side and they raise and lower the whole contraption and that's a winch motor in the middle there and we'll take a closer look at all that stuff right now okay we're up at the top and you can see there's a hand crank on this side right here and you can raise and lower the whole thing with this before in order to use the hand crank you have to release this little button right here on top and that little button there lifts up and then this free lets the winch free wheel then you can use the hand winch Right now, all I have is just two wires coming off the winch as a test. We put a battery on there and it does raise and lower everything. These rods here are inch and a half threaded rod. They're six threads per inch. I wish they were eight threads per inch because then one turn would be an eighth of an inch, two turns a quarter inch, four turns a half inch, you know, that and so on. But the thing is, uh, with the six, you get a lot of that anyway three turns would be a half an inch a turn and a half is a quarter inch and so three quarters of a turn then would be an eighth of an inch and it's not that hard to figure that out with the handle up here and uh, the winch turns slow enough that you can count the revolutions very easily so I can be pretty accurate with that as well and I have checked it and it's exactly on the money when you do that my adjustment system here I have this I bolt I can turn and this will, as you can see, as I turn it, it starts to pull this back and tightens it up. It tightens up the belt, the band, I should say. And then I can adjust it sideways with these two adjustments here. And that will uh, adjust the wheel this way. And you, right now, the wheel is running a little bit of an angle. I can see it. The motor is going to drive a pulley that's going to sit back here behind the main pulley. I was thinking about dropping this down and just driving it with one belt and having the motor in between here. But the problem with that is that it cuts out height on the height. Uh, it cuts out the height of the log that you can cut here. I can cut a pretty big beam this way as long as I don't reduce this distance. That's why I elected to just leave it up here and run it with a separate pulley and belt. This side over here is fixed, so this side here doesn't move. The way I did this, I can drop the blade right down to the carriage. It's a little front heavy, I got to admit. I may have to weight the back here, and I might do that, but it rolls real easy, so I think I could put a little weight on the back wheels there if I need to to offset that. But the way I have it working 
is I can drop these wheels all the way down to within a half an inch of these rails. The cross member right here is exactly one inch below this so an inch and a half then would be the final board that I could cut. If I wanted to cut an inch and a half board there um, I could do it with them laying right on the tracks. At least that's the theory and we don't know how well it's all going to work in practice yet. Now I'll show you some other parts that I've made on my lathe. I made these blade guides on my metal lathe. I just turned down a piece of two inch down to what you see here. I put these little ridges in there. I thought maybe that would help clear a little sawdust. I've got bearings pressed in on both sides. So those would be the blade guides. And the blade guides would go something like this right here to just keep the blade from getting pushed back as you're going through the log. I will come off of this support here down to these and these will be adjustable in and out this way and I'll have another one over here on this side so I have two of those I might make a third one for up here to just keep any slack out of the middle of the upper belt and I don't know if I'll need that yet or not I'll decide that after we get it started up I also bought a reversing solenoid here or if that's what you want to call it or switch or whatever and this will allow me to connect up the winch to a battery and this motor has an electric start so we will have a battery and uh, anyway I can connect this up between the winch and the battery and then I can put a, a two-way switch on it and I can go up or down with the switch got it all headed the right direction I believe it's been a struggle I got to admit I'm not I didn't go through all the struggles because I had a bunch of taking it apart trying it over and different things most of the problem came from the lift uh, working that out but uh, I've got that working really good now for one thing the two threaded bars weren't that straight they were probably had more than a quarter inch of bow in them and I had to straighten those out and that wasn't easy with an inch and a half rod <laughs> but I did get them fairly straight I'd say there's a sixteenth of an inch bow in them now but that's not too bad but anyway it does work really well so far I'm just hoping it works after we get it all fired up the sawmill is now complete at least the mill head part of it we've got our blade guides here this particular blade guy can slide sideways by moving these two bolts right now and we're going to put hand uh, screws on these eventually just haven't done it yet and this is fully adjustable to get the tilt up and down and and it so I, and it can be moved in for the width of the log the other adjuster is permanently affixed but it is adjustable up and down or up and down and tilt you can see that we've got the motor going the motor is electric start it does work we've tested it the blade seems to track okay knock on wood we've got the battery connected up and you can follow those wires up and it runs the winch at the top up there that controls the height by turning the two big screws on either side it's six threads per inch meaning that every six turns goes exactly one inch and so therefore three turns is a half an inch a turn and a half is a quarter inch so you can control your adjustments pretty easily just by watching the revolutions and it does spin fairly slow that's probably the biggest negative is that it actually spins probably a little too slow to suit me right now and we may have to adjust that here we have a ruler that is uh, attached with magnets and uh, and then there's, here's the uh, height uh, calculator right here and so we can watch that go up and down and uh, know exactly how far we're moving the uh, height you can see the big pillow block bearings you can see my adjuster here this will uh, tilt the wheel back and forth with this adjuster and this one and then this adjuster right here tightens the wheel and tightens the blade just about ready to go so we're this is going to be the maiden voyage here we'll uh, try to get the video of the very first cut and see what happens
first cut. <laughs> Uh, maybe half, I don't know. Oh wow, we could really fire that puppy up. Yeah. Look at there, it cut that sucker. <laughs> we could put, look at that's kind of pretty. We put down your wall of decoration. Well, Sassafras is there? a very pretty wood. Yeah, I'm not going to cut any more though until we get the log holding because that one there really made me nervous. It was wiggling a lot and I thought, oh boy, if that turns loose, man, it'll break that blade. How do you like all my electronic capabilities here? I mean, I just push a button and it raises up. That clears the log when I go back through, you see. Wait till he gets the one that he pushes a button and goes to bed. He just leaves a stack of logs out here. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to put a chain drive on that event on both sides, and then I'll, I'll, I'll have another button I'll push, and it'll go forward on its own, too. So it will have its own drive also. Well, friends, here we are outside. We've got the sawmill out of the building. I put it on wheels since the last time I showed a video on this. I didn't really plan to do that. I wasn't going to make it a mobile uh, sawmill, but I had those old axles sitting around, and I needed to raise the sawmill up to work on some things. So I thought, let's just set that on that axle, and then we can move it around. Well, after I did that, I just liked it, and I decided to go ahead and leave it there. So I went ahead and mounted it permanently. You can see I have uh, jacks right here to lift it off the ground. Over here, I have a jack. I have a jack in the center right here that uh, levels the middle of the machine and then I have jacks on both ends and I can pull it with my tractor wherever I want it. So that part's pretty cool. It's a little bit flimsy on this four inch, uh, quarter inch um, angle iron, but it's not bad. It, it does wiggle around a little bit so you have to strap the machine down pretty good and I've, I also made my uh, log holders double as machine holders so they also hold the machine uh, as I'm traveling in addition to putting a couple of straps on it and we're about ready to load it up with a big old walnut log and I mean this is well it's not that big a diameter but it's a big long log it's probably a 18 inch diameter log but it's probably 16 feet long or better so I'm probably going to saw it up into eight foot length the bark has pretty much rotted off this log. It's been laying around for two or three years. You can see the ant colony on there. <laughs> how underneath That was underneath the bark. So who knows how good this log is going to be. This is the small end of the log. And it's a pretty good sized log. It's about 15 and 3 quarters at the big end, almost 16. And at the little end, and the little end kind of forks off here. There's kind of a fork right here, so it's not as good of a measurement. But it's actually pretty close to the same, although if you measure across this way, it's only like 13. So it's not a real big log, but it's there's quite a bit of wood there. So we'll see what we can do with it. Well, I ran into a technical difficulty, uh, which is not uncommon on some of these things. I have a part that sticks out enough and it bumps this, this log curls around my stop here and comes back around and so there's a part here that hits this and won't let it go past. So I'll have to move the log that way or something and figure out a way to hold it. Not uncommon, I guess, when you're first starting out here figuring this stuff out.
don't have any longer pieces of pipe yet. I just got to get some. That's the longest I've got, so it just barely comes up. It's this log's a little too big to be sawn with these little short pieces of pipe that are my stops. So we'll just have to. I'm going to flip it over and just. No, I'm going to make one more cut just because I know it's going to be a problem. perfect yet. It's just pretty good, but it's not perfect by a long shot. The, the blade is not running flat. It's, it's tilted up a little bit and it's wanting to climb. So that's why I went so slow and backed up a few times. So I'll have to do some blade adjustment there. And I've got the ability to adjust the angle of the blade cut, so I will do that. It was set real good, but to be perfectly honest with you, I turned the whole thing over when I was first testing the trailer. And so... I, it's out of adjustment now, and so I need to adjust that again before I get back to serious sawing. But we did get the board squared up here, or the so we should be able to get some real nice one buys out of this. The uh, roughly get about ten. We can get about ten ten inch boards out of here, or something like that. Just thought I'd show you how I adjust the tilt of the blade. Now the tilt of the blade I'm talking about with the blade running down like that or the blade running up like this. And you can see I've got a straight edge on the blade here with this clamp and I can measure then down to my cross pieces and I get it exactly set the same now. And I can adjust that with these bolts that are on the top of these here. I can adjust it. I can adjust the tilt this way and I've got it exactly right now. So hopefully it'll cut a little bit flatter it was out of adjustment by about a half an inch at least. So that's quite a bit on a three foot distance. Or I guess I'd say 18 inches out, out this way and 18 inches out that way. But anyway, it's, it's pretty flat now. Let's see how it cuts. Well, we had another little technical failure. 
my rotor came off my little guide bushing that I made and there's a design flaw in that too just like everything on my thing <laughs> oh we got a lot of little things to work out but we'll figure it out I guess Thank you.